Hi, guys. Um, my seven-year-old little cousin sent me this drawing the other day. That's very cute, right? But man, look at how smooth her landscape is. I mean, this, the, the mountains look like triangles, the sky is a straight line, but I don't blame her. I mean, she's completely biased by Euclidean geometry, right? She's studying at school, and I have nothing against it. Um, but to my mind, it tends to oversimplify our perception of nature. I mean, have you guys ever seen a perfect square or a perfect triangle or a perfect circle in nature? Think about it. I mean, we just have to face it. In nature, nothing is flawless, except Beyonce, but we all know that. Um, <laughs> no, the truth is we live in a complex, irregular world where the movements of um, streams and rivers and the branching of neurons and blood vessels cannot be reduced to idealized shapes. So let's all take a step back from Euclidean geometry and to step up to reality enter the, the real, rough world that could be measured thanks to fractal geometry. Now, you see, I'm not an expert. I'm not a scientist. I'm just a fan of this guy, the late, the great Benoit Mandelbrot, who spent his entire life studying roughness and trying to develop a new field of geometry, fractal geometry. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering what fractals are, right? Well, uh, fractals can be found in the most dangerous, dark places, places that usually people don't want to go to. And by that, I mean the office. The other day, and it's a true story, a couple of days ago I was at the office and I came across this plant. It's called a fern. And my first thought was, wow, man, what a messy plant. Look at it. Uh, but as I looked closer, I realized it was a fractal. Now, if we take a look at one of its leaves and we zoom into it, we'll realize that the little leaves are the same, have the same shapes as the bigger ones. And this is the first characteristic of fractals. It's called self-similarity, as one pattern repeats itself at different scales. Now, second property is a bit more complicated. It's called non-integer dimensions, or fractal dimensions. Now, we can all agree on this, we live in a three-dimensional world, right? From the zero-dimensional point, to the one-dimensional line, to the two-dimensional plane figures, like triangles, to the three-dimensional solids, like pyramids, let's say. But fractals work differently. They're actually in between dimensions. Now, if we take, for example, the digital representation of a, of a fractal landscape, a mountain, for example, it's actually going to be between dimension two and three. And the more heaps and hills and roughness it contains, the more it approaches dimension three. Now, take a look at this mountain. It's actually a computer-generated mountain, and it looks so real, right? It looks so real because we know the dimension of this mountain is 2.15, and we have applied it to an algorithm to generate this image. Now, what happens if we increase this dimension to, let's say, 2.8? It doesn't look real anymore. So actually, thanks to Fractal, we can create graphical images of nature using nothing, out of nothing, except their fractal dimensions. And this has actually changed the way we make films and use special effects. Some of the graphics you have seen, you may have seen, in Star Wars or Star Trek were made using fractal geometry. Well, as you can see, fractals are extraordinary because they have many, many applications. In engineering, science, arts, um, astrophysics even. Uh, but there's one that really got me very, very excited. Um, three years ago, a team of scientists from the Max Planck Institute for uh, Intelligent Systems have found out a way to identify cancer cells using fractal geometry. According to them, the roughness of cells is an indicator of their aggressiveness. You see the one on your right? It's a pancreas cancer cell. 
is more rough and more irregular on the edges, and it happens to be more aggressive. Um, so it's, it's only a start, and hopefully this uh, research is going to continue, but we know today that this kind of method is cheaper, faster, and far more accurate than the established ones. Now, you see, to sum it up, fractals made us have a better understanding of how nature works, of how our body works, but it doesn't tell you why I love them. The reason I fell in love with fractals is dysfunction. Yep, <laughs> fc of z equals z squared plus c. I see some of you got scared over here, but don't worry. I'm not going to go into mathematical details. Just, just bear in mind that this is a very, very simple function. Although it may not look like it, it's a simple function. Simple function, and yet its graphical representation is one of the most incredible, sophisticated, and complex thing I've ever seen on, on a complex plane. Uh, it's a uh, fractal, and it's called the Mandelbrot set. And um, so I suggest we zoom into it and see what happens. Actually, I have, a, I have a fractal animation that was created by a very talented developer called Michael Hogg, and who kindly allowed me to share it with you today. So we'll see it. And the music is by Kai Angel. Enjoy. <laughs> my friend, is what infinity looks like. Literally, infinity. If you have a computer that is powerful enough, you can go on forever and ever and ever, and you will always find this shape, the black shape. And th the beauty of it is that at each different scale, you will find shapes that had never appeared before. That's the beauty of it. So actually, fractals have changed the way I look at things, the way I look at life, um, I try to accept, embrace, and even celebrate the irregularities, complexity, and roughness of my life. Because at the end of the day, you never know what good may come out of it. There can be a source of beauty, even infinite beauty. So if only for this reason, please, next time you see kids drawing, make sure you tell them that mountains are not triangles. Thank you.